Hello, welcome to my limited set review for Black and Khans of Tarkir. Uh, to preface this set review specifically, um, Khans is coming to Arena and I have not played it before, but I'm treating it as if it's just any other limited set that's coming out. I'm going to do a set review of it. I'm going to see see if, you know, my, my card evaluation skills translate to older cards, you know, cards and you know people already know some of the answers to this right like there are people have played a lot of people have played the uh, set a lot of people like the set very well liked uh, i'm gonna see if i can like having basically no knowledge of it uh do some some good you know apply my modern limited brain to the old cons of tarkir framework and see if see how i do you know maybe i'll be wrong maybe we'll uh we'll gain some new insights and uh either way i think it'll be fun it's a fun little experiment to see if i can uh, evaluate the old cards how am i evaluating the cards well i'm glad you asked here's the criteria i use to evaluate cards and limited um tier one is the best tier five is the worst um yeah that's uh that's kind of it and we're just gonna get started here uh with Bellowing Saddle Brute. Uh, three in the blue for a 4-5 with Raid. When it enters the battlefield, you lose four life unless you attack with a creature this turn. So, I mean, it's a four mana 4-5. How good is a four mana 4-5? In these days, it was large. It's, it's going to be the biggest creature on the battlefield in pretty much every game state until the morphs get here, right? There's the big green dudes and, like, there's some other bigger, like, morph creatures. But, you know, I mean, this thing's going to be pretty large. Um... How easy is it to attack in black, specifically? Mm, there's some concerns there, and I originally had this in tier 2, and I bumped it down, because I was like, eh, it might be a little harder to attack than, than I'm thinking. Losing 4 life is really bad. Like, playing this and losing 4 life is really, really bad. But I just think that, like, by turn 4, finding, like, an attack, again, like, you can just attack morph into morph, and they're not really going to want to block, so it's probably fine. Like, a lot of games are going to be like, turn 3 morph, your opponent goes turn 3 morph, you can just attack into their morph and then play this if you're on the play. Just be on the just be on the play, forehead. Just be on the play, and then this card will be serviceable. Seems easy enough to me. I don't understand why everybody can't do it. Bit of revelation. Three and a black for a sorcery. Put the top. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. You lose two life. It's another card that they would print cheaper today. They printed this at three mana basically. Um. And. It was good. Like, that was really good at 3 mana. I mean, it's a sorcery, too, so that does hurt, right? But, again, in these in these these hard times, when, uh, you know, people used to play hill giants and stuff, you know, like, this, you know, this, you know it could be, but I think it's kind of okay, right? You're getting some selection, you're enabling delve. Delve is really good. Like, you get some of the, you're actually getting some tempo back from putting cards in your graveyard. You're putting three cards in your graveyard with this card. So that's, you're basically getting three mana if you have enough delve cards in your deck. Like, this only costs, like, one mana, right? Because you're getting that three mana back. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I kind of like it. I, I think it's kind of okay. Blood-soaked champion. Single black mana for a 2-1. It can't block, and it has raid. You can pay one on a black to return to the battlefield from your graveyard only if you attack with a creature this turn. So this doesn't have... This is your typical, like, one mana skeleton thing that comes back. It doesn't have some of the restrictions, but it has other restrictions, like not being able to block. Um, but if you, you know, I mean, a one mana two one in these times is pretty big. I can't, it, it's going to be relevant for a large stage of the game. Like, you play this on turn one, it's going to be relevant up until turn three. You know, in modern limited, it would probably only be relevant until turn two in this game, and it's going to be relevant until turn three. And that's, you know, it's significant. That's a significant difference. Um, there are some sacrifice -y things that you kind of do stuff, kind of, and this can enable that, and I, I have some hope that it could be good. Dead drop. Nine and a black. Nine and a black. That's ten whole mana for a sorcery with delve. Target player sacrifices two creatures. No, thank you. So they printed this at two black black, I think, in call time. And that card was unplayably bad. And I think this is going to be more expensive than that on average. So, <laughs> I guess it can cost one mana. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It, uh, I think it's just, I think it's just, too, like, because, again, like, you're gonna really going to use up a Delve card slot in your deck for this. You could just, there's so much better Delve cards than this one. Debilitating Injury. One and a black for an enchantment, uh, enchanted creature, enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two. So it's like a, a two mana dead weight. 
But in a set with Morph, a two mana dead weight is still I think it's still really good. I'm gonna be honest with you. Now there are issues, right? Your opponent can transform the morph thing if you do it on... Like, if they just leave up the mana, you're like, well, man, it's kind of a nightmare because they can just flip their morph guy and then it probably it might not die to the debilitating injury. And so that is a consideration. But the fact that you can just blow up their three mana play with, like, your debil like your removal spell... And removal is scarce. I think it's going to be decent. I think it's going to be a fine card. I think you're going to play it. Um, yeah. That's that's kind of my view on it. I don't really see a whole lot of reason. And again, it, it's good with the like, delve and stuff. It goes into your graveyard, right? You know, removal is just good with delve generally, like cheap interaction. So, looks decent to me. Despise single block mana for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a creature or planeswalker card from it. That player discards that card. Um. Yeah, I mean, this is like the anti-duress, right? And limited duress is kind of bad because, you know, your opponents don't really play... Opponents play a lot of creatures. So it's creatures. It also hits planeswalkers, of which there are several. Um, I think there's two planeswalkers. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it looks... looks. I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I, I think it's fine. There's always... He has the same issues where it's like, hey, if you if you draw this on turn six, like, good luck, you know, right? But, you know, like, Thoughtseize isn't very good in, in limited generally. And this is probably, like... About as good as Thoughts Ease. You know, you don't get as much selection, but you don't lose two life, so. Yeah, I don't know. I'm okay with it. Disowned Ancestor. Single black mana for a 0 4 with Outlast for 1 in the black. So, this is an example of a Outlast card that I kind of like, and the reason I kind of like it is that it curves into itself. Um, you go this on 1, Outlast it on 2, and then you have like, and there's like plus 1 plus 1 counter payoffs and like synergies and stuff. And, like, there really aren't that many good two drops in the format. And this is, like, a 1-5 on turn two. It's just, just tapped, but it's, like, it's pretty big. Like, and you can make it, like, if you're on turn three, like, you somehow don't have anything to do, which is never happening in this format. You're always going to have something to do on turn three. Um, I don't know. It's, it seems good. It seems kind of good to me. So I, I like it. Uh, I think it's actually kind of decent. And there's, like, a very solid defensive card. Um. That's going to be really difficult for your opponents to get through, I feel like. Because it's just, it's so hard. Like, a one, it basically is, a, it's a, you know, two mana, one five. It's pretty big. And you can grow it into the late game and make it more relevant. And you can do stuff with it. I don't know. I kind of don't hate it. Dutiful Return. Three and a black. For sorcery, return up to two target creature cards from your game into your hand. Seems really slow to me, but maybe I'm just, like, you know, maybe like this was okay back then. Maybe this was the type of card that, you know, back in these times was sort of okay, but, you know, now it just would be completely unplayable. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That's how it is. Empty the Pits. XX, black, 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 black. For an instant, instant. With Delve. Um, and you can put X, 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield tapped. Um, so you can make a bunch of tap dudes. Uh, yeah, this is really good. Like, so you're paying four mana, and you have to pay double X t to do this. But like, I mean, you can make a ton of guys potentially if you have if you have enough mana and you have enough enable enable ability. The problem is you have to cast quad black. You have to cast quad black card, and that's really freaking hard to do. Like, that's not easy to do. <laughs> it's not a thing that is like easy to do in a three color set. And I have a lot of concerns about that. I probably could have just put it in tier five. I, that's where I had it, and then I moved it. I was like, ah, you know, maybe there's hope. You know, maybe you could just build around this, and it's like kind of playable. You know, but I, it's not. You know, anything great. Grim, Harspex. Two to black for a three two with morph for single black mana. And whenever another non token creature you control dies, you draw a card. So one of those like cards that's like has morph like kind of just to have it. Like I get that like oh your opponent doesn't know that they're walking into your thing that draws you cards. It's like I, I get that like you flip it up for one black. It's like kind of fine. I don't know. I think you'd rather just play this on three. It's three two. It is only it is another non-token creature. So there's that I guess. It does work with the morphs right. Like morphs aren't tokens, so they you can't trade them off and then. This draws you a card. So I like it, tier 2. I'll put it in tier 2. I think it's a solid card, but, you know, 2 toughness is a little bit tough. 
Swiftness. Gurmag Swiftwing. One and a black for a 1-2 flying first strike haste. So I put this in tier 3 because I think it's a functional 2 drop and there just aren't very many of those. But it could just end up not being a functional 2 drop. Well, it remains to be seen, to be honest with you. Like, this may just do nothing, but just be a 1 2. I mean, it has first strike, so it's, like, kind of annoying. The problem is, there's, like, nothing that, like, buffs creatures in this set, really. There's not, like, a mechanic that does that without, like, Outlast does it to itself. But, yeah, it, it kind of needs some help, but if you, if you can help, you know, get it there, like, it, it's pretty good. Karu Bloodsucker. Tuna black for a 2 2. Whenever a creature you control with toughness 4 or greater dies, each opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. And you can pay 2 in a black and sacrifice another creature to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. That seems okay. I mean, there are creatures, there are a lot of creatures in this set with 4 toughness or greater. There's not as many with 4 power or greater. So, I mean, you tell you do tell me on that one. Because there's supposed to be a 4 power mechanic. But, uh. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It seems like sort of okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everybody's playing 3-minute 2-2s, two you can play a 3-minute 2-2 two two that doesn't do anything. Right? Uh, theoretically, I don't know, this is still just terrible, but I kind of like it. I, like, the draining for 2 is, is pretty large. That's a pretty good ability to have. So. Carry Dreadmaw. 4 and a black for a 4-4 four, four defender. And you can pay one on a green and sacrifice another creature, and you gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. Honestly, 5-mana 4-4 four, four defender isn't, like, that bad. Like, it's kind of something. Like, it kind of does something, right? Like, eh, I don't know, like, it sort of does stuff, and you can sack things. And there's some stuff that you want to sack, and, like, eh, it's a 4 power inch for toughness. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe it does something. It might still just be a defender. Krumar Bond... I should probably put this in the, the same tier as the last one, huh? Three black, black for a five, three with morph. Or four and a black. I don't know why. Like, you couldn't... You really... Was it too much? Was it Was it too much to make this morph for... It's probably honestly just, like, good enough. I, you know what? Fine. 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 It could, it's probably a tier 4. I don't know. What a tier 4, tier 5. What a, it's just a vanilla 5 drop. It's fine. It's whatever. It's morph. Okay. Mardu Skull Hunter. 1 on a black for 2 1. It enters the battlefield tapped. It has raid. It enters the battlefield if you attack this turn. If you attack with a creature this turn. Target opponent discards a card. I guess technically. No, there's not any ways to attack without creatures. I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, this. If you. If you. Like, obviously, this isn't a 2 drop, right? Not a 2 drop. But, I mean, like, attrition-y style of decks, I think, are better in formats like this, where it's, you know, longer games, you can sort of run your opponent out of stuff, and then you just have things on the battlefield, and this is better stats than you usually see for this type of effect. Again, you have to attack. You could play it on turn two, although I don't advise that, because 2 mana 2 one is bad, but I kind of like it. Murdoch Nightblade. 3 and a black for a 2-3 outlast for a single black. And each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter has death touch. So this is really good with the one drop that I talked about earlier. The the one mana 04 that has outlast two. You go one drop, outlast it on two. Then you play this on four and you have like a one five death touch. It's like, oh man, that's like that's freaking large, you know? So I think this thing's decent, right? Then the base rate's not very good, but you outlast it once and you make and like give your other and there are creatures with plus one plus one counters. It's not like, you know. I don't think it's every creature by any means, but it seems okay. Molting Snakeskin. Single black mana for an enchantment. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has two and a black regenerate this creature. Sure. <laughs> Murderous Cut. Modern Staple. Four and a black for an instant with Delve, and you destroy target creature. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a decent removal spell. Uh, removal used to be good, I've been told. Um... This card looks good again, yeah. You know, modern, modern staple, right? And so, seems solid enough to me. Necropolis Fiend, seven black, black for eight, four, five with delve flying. You may pay X and tap it and exile tar X cards from your graveyard. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. 
So yeah, it seems really solid, right? Like this is a you know creature that you can. It's pretty big. You can make it cheaper, and then you can also use its ability to uh, destroy other stuff. Assuming you get more things in your graveyard. And yeah, that's good. That's a good thing to be able to do on your thing, like your game-ending thing. It's nice to be able to just be like, hey, I'm going to remove your stuff if I want to. Probably better to just attack, but well, sometimes it's not, you know. Raider Spoils. Three and a black for a an enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one plus so. Whenever a warrior you control deals combat damage to a player, you may pay one life if you do draw a card. Nope. Way too situational. Yes, there's warriors. Like I, honestly, like every creature in the set could be a warrior, and this still wouldn't be good. It would still be like a tier five card, just because it, it, it's four mana the card that doesn't affect the board is just really bad. Like it's just really bad. Like if it gave your creatures plus one plus one, I'd be like, yeah, it's still bad. It <laughs> still isn't good, but uh, it would maybe be playable at that stage. I just don't. I just don't think we're. Uh, I don't think we're there. You know what I mean? Raksh... Rakshas... Oh, no, I can't pronounce anything. Secret. Two and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent discards two cards. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. This card looks great, to be honest with you. Like, this is a, this is Mind Rot, but getting the mill two on your Mind Rot it's pretty good. Like, that's pretty good. In the world, in the Delve landscape, you know... Milling two cards is very valuable, and black is definitely a delve color. So, I like this card. You know, again, I think Bind Rot's better in this format than in a lot of formats. Like, you have a lot more time to be like, I'm going to do nothing and make my opponent discard two cards, and then I'm going to mill two, and I'm going to make my cards cheaper, and that's, like, good for me. So, I like it. Retribution of the Ancients, single black mana for an enchantment. You can pay black mana to remove X plus one plus one counters from target. Among creatures you control, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. No, I don't even really want to bother talking about them. Like, if, like this card is just horrible. I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> Rise of the Serpent. Four black black for a sorcery. Destroy target creature. If that creature had a plus one plus one counter on it, put a plus one, put a one one green snake creature onto the battlefield. I think this card's kind of playable. There's going to be a decent amount of creatures with plus one, plus one counters on them. It's six mana sorcery speed removal. That's bad. But again, back in my day, it was like kind of fine, and at least it impacts the board. If it, if you do, if it does kill something with a counter, and again, that happens sometimes. So, yeah, it's kind of playable. I'm not probably not going to play it. <laughs> Rotting Mastodon, four to black for a 2 8. Ruthless Ripper. <laughs> Single black mana for a 1-1 death touch. You can morph to reveal a black card in your hand. And when it's turn fade up, up target player loses two life. This looks really good to me. So again, you do need a black card to be able to turn it face up. But, I mean, ambush your opponent's thing with like a, de with a death toucher. Pretty dang good. Like they attack, like you have a 3-3 you have a three, three in play. Like you're probably never playing this. Like you're never playing this on turn one. You're just never doing it. You're morphing it and then you flip it and block their thing, and then they're like, oh, that's that's really bad for me. <laughs> like, I didn't, that's not what I wanted. Um, so yeah, this just seems really good. It's going to be tier one. This just seems like a really good card, right? Like, just deal some damage, like, block their thing, trade off. Like, this is just so annoying to play against. Like, how do you have, you can't really play around it, because it's literally zero mana, right? So it just is a nightmare. Shambling Attendance. Seven and a black for a three-five death touch with delve as well. Yeah, I mean this is fine. I think this is a fine card. But again, you know, diminishing returns on delve. I think this is probably one of the worst delve payoffs. Um, but it is nice. It's not bad. Like the death. Like it's a it's a big creature that can attack through all your opponents. Like big toughness creatures. Um, let's say it's four mana for a three-five death touch. Is that acceptable? Yeah, on turn four, but you're probably never there on turn four. So it's probably like a five mana three five death touch, and that's that's okay. It's fine. You know, we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it just delve just gets there. But again, like I think there's just better delve payoffs. So DC's pet three and a black for a one four lifelink with morph for one and a black. Super weird. I don't know. Just a really weird card that looks terrible to me. Nothing about this card is appealing, really. 
Soltai Scavenger. Five and a black for a 3-3 three, three Delve Flying. I like this. This looks good to me. Right? Um, obviously, like, it doesn't get to be on... Like, you don't get to play this on turn three, right? Like, you don't get to just be like, oh, I get to play a three-mana, three-three three, three flyer. No, no, no. But just, like, it being cheaper is nice. It allows you to have higher tempo turns. You can, like, you know, do cool stuff and, like, whatever. And I think this is decent. Like, I think this is good. I probably should move the other Delve thing up to, like, tier three. Like, Delve... It's a fun mechanic. I like Delve. Delve is a it's a fun mechanic. I think it's limited to to play with, right? Kind of like escape and stuff. But uh, I I think it's I think this is a decent card. I think it's fine. Storm of Blood flies. Four and a black for a zero zero. It enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I just like simply refuse to believe that this card has ever been good. Um, to be honest with you, like, this, they've printed several versions of this card that are all worse and all, like, well, they're not worse, but they're all bad. Like, they're just all bad, and this is, like, the original one, and it just isn't good, and I don't know. I don't really ever, like, I just can't ever believe that it's good, basically. Throttle. Four and a black for an instant. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. Yeah, I mean, this looks kind of playable. I don't know. Like, removal's bad. This seems like a removal spell that could do something. Four, minus four minus four is better in you know this set than it is in most current sets just because the creatures aren't as bigger than that ever really. There's, I mean there's I mean honestly this set there's actually more creatures that have more toughness than that but those creatures don't matter. <laughs> it's, it's freaking eight million walls. There's so many walls in this set. Back when they used to print defenders, ah, back in the defender, back in the good old days when defenders were in the lexicon of cards that they printed. And this is the final black card, Unyielding Krumar. Uh, three and a black for a three three, and you can pay one and a white and give it first strike until end of turn. I don't know. This is just like a hill giant that like threatens to be slightly better than that, which I think is like kind of okay <laughs> in this for this type of format. It's like, well, if you even if you can't activate it, it's like, eh, hill giant. You know, it has a higher ceiling than some of these cards, or has a higher floor than some of these cards. You know. Does not have a higher physical ceiling than any card, really. <laughs> it's just, like, not very good. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's it. Uh, that's all the black cards. Quick one. We're going fast. I'm going fast. I'm running. I'm zooming. I'm reviewing. I theoretically didn't miss any of the cards when I copy and pasted them over from the thing. But maybe I did. And that's okay. You know what? That's okay. We all make mistakes. And, uh... Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this. Hopefully you enjoy, enjoy enjoying this journey through the past and also the present of magic. And if so, I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.